Okay, so now that we've introduced this idea of depth first search, we can now kind of talk about kind of a slightly different approach, which is the idea of breadth first search or BFS. So suppose we didn't want this kind of behavior where um, you kind of explored going down one path until you reached the end before coming back. What if we wanted to visit all the nodes that were close first and then explore all the nodes that are a little bit further away? So instead of kind of going down one path, um, you kind of maybe explore it level by level. And that's not always quite clear when we're talking about graphs, but if you think back to the specific type of graph called a tree that we're familiar with, it's going with like the first level, then the second, and then so on. So what if we could try to travel the, through the graph like that? So we would call an algorithm that would do this a breadth first search, because instead of going down the depth of the graph, going down one direction, it kind of goes a lot of directions at once. It has a wide breadth. Um, so what we might want to do is thinking about this traversal and which nodes we're marking as visited, we might start with our start node, and then we might mark all the nodes that are one edge away, and then maybe mark all the nodes that are two edges away, then maybe three edges away, and then four edges away before we've completed the whole graph. So it's not clear how we're going to implement this in code quite yet, but um, what we're going to need to do is somehow try to come up with a way of going about iterating in this order that starts one node away, two nodes away, or sorry, three edges away, etc. Notice one thing, we're still going to respect this visited set. So it's not going to be the case that like when we get to the five, we're going to try to go back to the four or something like that. We're only going to explore things that we have not yet visited. So we're in some sense thinking about the shortest number of edges from one node to the next. Um, so exploring this layer by layer approach, you can imagine maybe coloring each layer um, in kind of this gross orange colored blob um, that shows like how far away it is from our start node. And so we're gonna try to come up with a way of iterating in this way that makes sure that we always visit the nodes, all of the nodes that are distance one away and then all of the nodes that are distance two away, etc. But it's not clear at all how to do this because the way we wrote this problem, this DFS before, was it needs to do this recursive call. And the problem is that recursive call that's inside this loop in some sense interrupt, interrupts this loop, right? Because before going to the next iteration of the loop, you have to go run that whole recursive function. And that like interruption is really stopping us from exploring both two and four right next to each other. Right now we pick the two first and then go to all of its edges because we had to go make that recursive call. So in some sense for BFS, we wanna make sure we complete that loop before processing the next children. And so recursion is not gonna be our answer here. What we really need is some data structure to queue up which nodes are next to work with so we can kind of queue up all of these nodes that are one away and then all the ones that are two away. And so queuing up something might kind of remind you of an ADT that's useful for queuing. That remind you of a queue? Yes. So we have this new algorithm called BFS and it's going to use a queue to keep track of the levels, keep track of how far away we are. So the first time you see all this code or this pseudocode, it looks a bit wonky. We're gonna walk through it kind of bit by bit. Um, and so hopefully it will make sense. And then we'll walk through an example to make sure we understand that. The first thing I'll mention is that um, to be a little bit more precise, I'm gonna add some like uh, some types to my pseudocode that kind of abstract away the notion of a graph. So this is actually gonna look a lot more like real Java code in some sense, because I'm, I'm writing these abstractions out. So I'm gonna have this graph type. We'll just assume it has graph operations that we'll, we'll want to use. So our extra data structure that we're gonna use is this thing, I'm gonna call it the perimeter, but we're gonna call it, it's going to be a queue of nodes. They're the ones that we need to explore, the next things we need to explore. So we're gonna have it when we start at one, make sure it has the two and the four, and then the next uh, iteration, it's gonna have something like the three and the five. Um, so we're going to keep track of all these things, this kind of next things to visit in this queue. We're still going to need our visited set, so we don't visit the same node twice. So how are we going to start this algorithm? Well, we start by adding the first node, the start node, to both the perimeter and the visited set. 
just as a way to start it off. Now, this algorithm is going to iterate, going to repeat, while there's still stuff in the perimeter. So it's going to start by saying, while the, there's still stuff in the perimeter, then grab that next thing. So remove that first value. And then let's go process all of its children. But we're not going to recurse and explore all paths from there. Instead, we're going to go to each node that is connected to this node we're processing right now. We're going to go to each node. If we haven't visited that node, add it to our perimeter and add it to our visited set. So add it to the things we're going to process next um, and mark it as visited so uh, we, don't, like, add it, we don't add it to the perimeter twice. So this perimeter is going to be gr a growing queue of things to process. And it's the power that comes from this first in, first out structure, the fact that the queue is ordered in this particular way, which is going to guarantee to us that we process level by level. This is probably not clear at all from this description. Let's look at an example. So how is this code going to work? So we start by exploring with the one. So we're going to add one to our perimeter and we're going to mark it as visited. So we don't add it to the perimeter twice. And so then we say, okay, while the perimeter is not empty, we're going to remove that uh, whatever values in there. So it's going to remove the one and then add in all of the edges coming from it to some other node. So for each edge uh, from, uh, from the one, um, grab the nodes associated to that edge two and four. If our visited set doesn't contain them, add them to our perimeter and then add them to our visited set. So my animation went there a little quickly. Let me show that again. You're going to remove the one from the perimeter because we call uh, perimeter.remove. And then we're going to go to each edge, grab the destination node or the second node from that edge. And then if we haven't visited yet, add it to our perimeter and our visited set. So that's going to add two and four. And next, we're going to the perimeter, we're going to loop back to the top and say, okay, well, the perimeter is not empty, so enter the loop again. Now, what's the value removed when we say perimeter.remove? Well, queues always remove the thing at the front. So we're going to remove the two and add all of its neighbors that we have yet to visit. So in this case, we only add five because we've already visited the one. We're still going to kind of loop over that once, but then we get to that if statement that says, hey, if we've already, con if we've already visited it, ignore it. Okay. So now we kind of go back up to the top and say, okay, well, parameter is not empty. Grab the next thing, remove the four, add all the things, uh, all of its neighbors that we haven't visited, then kind of repeat, remove the five, add all of its neighbors that we haven't visited. And notice, even though there are multiple neighbors, we don't go and explore them quite yet. We just add them to the end. So we add the six and the eight in the same uh, loop. And then we kind of remove the, the five, uh, sorry, uh, we remove the three, which has nothing else to process. Then we remove the six, add all of its neighbors, nine and seven, remove the eight, remove the nine, remove the seven. We try to process all their neighbors, but we visited them all, so we never add them in. Now, the, if you think about how this kind of ran throughout the whole algorithm run, the way we added and removed from the queue is exploring layer by layer. Notice we started with the one, then we process the two, and before processing, before exploring any of the things connected to two, we first have to explore that four. And the reason this happens is precisely because we're using a queue. Because even though we added more nodes connected to that two, we have to process that four first because it's a first in, first out structure. Then we process all the things that are two away, then all the things that are three away, and then four away. And so this property of using the structure with the queue is exactly why we get this layer by layer approach. Now, one thing I should mention it, that's a, a little hidden in this algorithm is we don't have any of these distinct demarcations that says like, oh, now we're finished with layer of distance two. Now we're going to process layer of distance three. But that's not strictly necessary always. We just wanted to go in this more layer by layer format. Um, we don't necessarily care of like printing something saying like, oh, I'm done with layer two now. You could definitely do that. You just need to keep track of some more state. But uh, we really just want to make sure that we weren't kind of going all the way down to a dead end before going down another path. So what I want you to do is I want you to explore this idea of this algorithm a little bit. 
but I want to have you test your understanding by changing one subtle thing about it. So I want you to just think about this graph example, and I want you to think about how would this algorithm change if I removed the queue and instead added a stack? So what if I just changed up this algorithm, same algorithm, same starting with the one and doing this exploration? What would happen if I changed that queue to a stack? Just go on a piece of pe uh, paper with a pencil and try to think about kind of this uh, thing I did on that last slide, but using a stack instead. So take a second and try that out on your own and just describe, do you see any patterns here? And you might not, and that's okay. Okay, so let's, uh, let's take a stab at this. How did using a stack change this? Well, it turns out that if you just change that one line of code, or and assuming maybe it still calls add and remove the same way, but on my last slide I showed push and pop, we end up creating BFS's evil twin, DFS. When you switch the queue to the stack, you don't change anything else about the code necessarily, you process it the exact same way, we have recreated depth first search. Now, why does this happen? Well, remember, we got breadth first search from the queue because the first in first out structure. Before processing any of a node's children or any of its neighbors, we always had to finish off the nodes that were already in the queue. However, when you use a stack, that's a LIFO structure. The last thing in is the first thing out. So say we start at the one and then we add two and four. Well, the next thing we're gonna process is the four and we're gonna add its children, whatever was there next. And then we have to process those children before ever getting back to that two. So because it's a last in first out structure and it turns out we get this recursive kind of uh, depth first search approach without using any recursion. So in this little example down here, I have Spider-Man and supposedly Spider-Man's evil twin. The instructor that made this slide didn't watch Spider-Man. I also don't watch Spider-Man. I know more about graphs than Spider-Man, so I can't correct if this is wrong or not. Um, so we'll just suppose that this is Spider-Man's evil twin. You can correct me in, in class if I'm wrong. Um, but these two algorithms give you breadth first search and depth first search, the exact same algorithm ex uh, or code except for which structure you're using, which is just a really cool symmetry we have here of the kind of same process, slightly different details give you wildly different results. So what we've talked about so far are two graph traversal types of algorithms. We've seen breadth first search and depth first search. And we actually saw two implementations of depth first search. One is the iterative way that uses that stack. And the other was that recursive way I showed at the beginning of the video or in the last video. Now, one thing that I was kind of subtly skimming by was you might have noticed we stopped talking about the ST connectivity problem. What we've just described, DFS and BFS, are just iteration orders. They're just super, super generic descriptions of how you can iterate over a graph and which order you do that. These are in some sense, uh, some sort of like meta algorithm. They aren't anything, part they don't necessarily try to solve a particular problem. Just like a for loop doesn't necessarily solve a particular problem. All a for loop does is just tell you how to do something multiple times. A graph traversal is just a way of talking about how do you go over a graph. You can use this to solve any type of problem you might want. These uh, iteration orders, DFS and BFS, are like the building blocks of any graph algorithm. Most graph algorithms will iterate over their, the graph, and these are just two such ways of doing that. So in our next video, we're going to start wrapping this up and start talking about how can I use these algorithms, or sorry, these kind of iteration orders, to solve problems, come up with an algorithm to solve any problem we want, starting with that ST connectivity problem.